Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, today's presentation, it's scheduled for an hour, but the presentation itself is gonna be, I'd say about 45 minutes. Uh, we have an opportunity for Q&A at the end, as well as throughout the presentation. So Brandon's gonna help us moderate. I'm not looking at the chat, but I'm a huge fan of interactive presentations. I do not want to be the talking head for 45 minutes and just drone on and on and on. So please uh, let us know what your questions are. We're going to have a wide range of topics that are designed to help your small businesses. So this presentation is 100% for you. So this is to take advantage of marketing strategies and tactics related SEO and some other marketing advice. So what I'm going to do today is share what I think is the most powerful and effective marketing advice for small businesses that you can actually do yourself. And I know that some people can get intimidated when you hear, you know, the term SEO or analytics or things that might be more technical in nature. Today's presentation is approachable. It's approachable for every single person, every single business owner. And if you want to go deeper, I say this at the end of the presentation, but I want to throw this out there up front. I'm available. I have my email at the end, uh, literally forever. So if you're here right now, you can send me an email forever. It does not expire. And I will either help answer your question related to SEO or digital marketing, or if it's over my pay grade or not in my lane, I'm happy to refer you to somebody that I think can help or a place where the answer exists. So this is solely to support you as a business owner and SEO is really, really powerful. So we are gonna lead with SEO, but we're also gonna get into some other topics that small business owners can absolutely take advantage of and do themselves. So with that, we're gonna get rolling. All right, a little bit of background about me. For those of you that I haven't met, uh, I'm Ed Reese, and I'm the principal of an agency called Six Man Marketing. We've been in Spokane for about 15 years. We've done SEO, paid search, analytics, usability, um, UX design, uh, marketing coaching, tactics, strategies. It's kind of run the gamut. We've been a very tactical and very specific type of agency. We actually don't build websites, but we make them work for you. So that's what we do. We're, we're very niche in that regard. So we're going to get some very specific uh, tactics that will, should hopefully be helpful for you today. And I've also been an educator for about the past 15 years. I'm a co-founder of an organization called Local U, which uh, was founded by myself, David Mim, Mike Blumenthal, and uh, eight other people who wanted to give conferences and seminars all across the country to small business owners, very similar to yourselves, that wanted to learn how to do this. So I've been doing this for a really long time, and I've had a lot of very common questions that small business owners uh, really need to tackle, and it's tough. So a couple of things out of the gate, just that I'm already aware of, I know how difficult it is to be a small business owner. I know you're overwhelmed. I, I know that if I'm giving you technical information, it's likely a challenge to know if you're doing it or if somebody on your very small team is going to do it. So this presentation is built to be as accessible as possible and as powerful as can be. So it's a both and kind of thing. And I also don't expect you to have all the answers in this presentation. It's just not possible to learn all that you need to know in roughly 45 minutes. So thus the being able to contact me uh, indefinitely with questions that you have. And I, and I do expect that in the, the next days to weeks, that's when I'd really encourage you to, to think about your questions because it does kind of get stale over time. So uh, I definitely encourage you to take notes today. If something comes up like, ooh, we could do that, whatever that might be, take some notes and then send me an email in a couple of days and, and go, hey, I, I really think we could do you know, this tactic uh, in the next week or two. Cool. How do we do that? So I'm here to help you do that. And like I said, I've been an educator for uh, doing this for like 15 years, and I've taught digital marketing and uh, career advice at Gonzaga for 10. So definitely uh, in the education lane in this specific field and here to help. Okay, what are we going to do? 
I'm going to set the stage here, get some context, and there's some low-hanging fruit, and I'm really going to address that. And I know that it's titled as SEO, but SEO quickly delves into all things online. So we're going to talk about SEO. We're going to talk about UX, which is short for usability or usability design, right? So we want people to get to your website or a presence online if you don't have a website. And then you want that experience to be a positive one. Really, what's the good of getting somebody to your website or a landing page or a listing or a social media presence if it doesn't engage well? So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about online reviews and how to create a process to get them because that's third-party validation. That is getting other people to tell your story for you. And I don't have it listed here, but we're also going to talk about uh, Google Analytics and how to measure this. Google really threw a monkey in the wrench uh, and is forcing everyone to update. I see Brandon nodding. Uh, Everyone's being forced to upgrade to what's called GA4. And in my opinion, it really just isn't approachable for small businesses. So I have been an advocate and Brandon is absolutely with me on that one. Uh, it's, It's a bummer because I have been an advocate of Google Analytics for two decades. It's been the best tool in my opinion. I really don't think I can recommend it to small businesses unless they have an interest in doing it, unfortunately. So I have some other options, uh, some low cost and free options we're going to talk about, and also a path um, to learn Google Analytics if you have the time and or resources to do that. And almost everything here uh, is free or low cost. So I'm not asking you to sign up for anything. Um, I was just talking to Brandon about this uh, before the presentation. I don't even want you as a client. Like this is not a pitch. I don't do this type of work anymore. I train people to do this kind of work. Okay. Um, I'm a coach. uh, I'm an educator and I am not looking for clients. So everything here is to help you uh, do better in this landscape. Okay. This is a harsh transition. I have a hot tub hammock. I don't know how you just go from uh, talking about educating you to letting you know that I have a hot tub hammock, but I do. And the context you'll get in a second. Uh, it is both a hot tub and a hammock. So the question you might be asking is why, or maybe even how do I even know to have a hot tub hammock? Like what the heck happened there? Well, let me tell you. Um, I searched for hot tubs, and this was even before the pandemic. So hot tubs now are like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars because things have gotten really expensive. When I was doing the search, it was around 2018, 2019, hot tubs were about seven, eight grand. And I did not want to pay seven to eight grand. So I did a search on Google for an affordable hot tub. And I discovered in my search, whoa. There are these things called hot tub hammocks that are a hot tub and a hammock for like 300 bucks. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. So I went to their website. It was a good website, like a very good website. Here's that usability and UX thing I was talking about. So I like what I saw and I still wasn't sure. So I looked online and I reviewed hot tub hammock and, you know, went back and saw all these reviews of people saying how awesome it was. Some people get the high-end heater, which puts the cost to about $1,200. Some folks just use hot water. I have a direct line to our hot water tank um, that could go outside. So I did the $300 running a tube through the house to the outside to fill my hot tub as hot as I want, right? Uh, But I didn't stop there. I was having such a good overall experience online and on the website. I gave them a call. I actually chatted first. They had online chat, so I asked some questions. Then I called and then I bought the hot tub, the hot tub hammock. The, the part that was bad about this is I didn't ask my wife it was, if it was okay to buy said hot tub hammock first. So that was a faux pas for any spouses out there, no matter who your partner is, ask them first. So I bought a hot tub hammock without, without spouse approval and uh, we, we have one now, right? So this is the process. And I bring this up because think about how crazy this is, okay? I didn't know this existed. I went online and searched for something. There's the discovery. I found something that looked cool. I went to the website, had a good experience, kept going down this path. 
was engaged, conversed with someone both in chat and then on the phone. And I thought, this sounds awesome. I'm going to buy it. I went from discovery to purchase in 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Okay. All of that sink in for a second while I take a drink so I don't lose my voice. <clears throat> this is the kind of power that's possible when you have a really good online experience. And it's a combination of search, website, whether it's listing. And if you don't have a website, I know a lot of people don't. It could be your Facebook marketplace. It could be social media. It could be wherever you have a public presence, right? That is possible. And my kids love it. So the boys are mine, uh, the, the girls from, from down the street. So that's a hot tub hammock and the kids love it. Okay. But I thought we were going to talk about SEO. Well, we, we, we kind of have already. So I discovered this by typing in affordable hot tub. Okay. Most people are looking what, so there's, there are terms called head and tail keywords. Okay. Head would be hot tub or hot tubs in Spokane or hot tub, whatever, right? I use what's called a long tail search. I looked for affordable hot tub, or it could be alternative hot tub options, low cost hot tub, um, discount hot tub. So with all of those terms, it's less competitive. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about today is how, how can you compete so that it's an advantage? Okay. So we are going to talk about SEO, but there's so much more. So whenever I've given one of these presentations, everything else comes to mind. So whether it's not keeping track of what's working, analytics, website, UX, usability, reviews. We're not going to talk about social or paid today, but those are important elements as well. So, um, so we're going to give a lot of information and here's how we're going to do it. So we have low hanging fruit. So DIY or do it yourself. I'm going to teach you how to do, do it yourself SEO. And I, I think of SEO as discoverability. That's all that it does. A lot of people oversell SEO. Like it's this end all be all. All SEO is, is getting the horse to water. Okay. You're getting a discovery. You're getting them to know you exist. Many other things need to happen, okay? That's why I added do-it-yourself website UX or usability. We want to make sure your website or your Facebook page or social or what have you is, is quality, answers questions, and provides a utility. It actually serves a purpose uh, for your audience. And then getting reviews. We're going to talk a little bit about getting reviews. Um, and again, that's third-party validation and unfortunately, bye bye Google Analytics. Analytics GA4 killed it for small biz, and I've got some options. So, with that, I see we have four comments in the chat, but I can't see what they are. And I, Brandon, do we have questions in there? Or where are we at on the, the think, chat stuff so far? Sure, Ed. I think the pressing question is how safe is the uh, uh, hammock? <laughs> for falling asleep in it um, because it does sound hazardous. You know, I haven't thought about that, but yeah, it's really cozy and I have gotten really relaxed. And if you're in a hammock with water in it, you could fall asleep in a water-filled hot tub hammock. That That is possible. Um, for those of you that are interested in a hot tub hammock, the, the, the best utility that I found isn't at our house. They're so amazing for camping because they hold water wherever you go and they're huge. So if you take it to a beach, you just dig a hole and fill it. That's super fun. And if you're going uh, camping along a riverbed, you can literally just put it in a river and kind of then get the water up and the sunlight will heat it. So you have this kind of warm water area on a river where the water might be cool. So camping and beaches are the best use for it. And I haven't found the need to, to buy the heater. They're, they, they're kind of just fine on their own. Any other questions around uh, non-drowning in the, the hot tub? The that was the only important one. Yep. Okay, okay. All right, we'll move it on. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples of search results. So, uh, and I'm going to explain the algorithms. And again, when I say algorithm, that's a big fancy word. I'm going to explain kind of the lanes and categories of where they're at and what what's powering it. So, uh, I love the grain shed. I think it's the best bakery on the planet, and I'm not exaggerating exaggerating on that. It's amazing. Um, so this 
is powered right here where you see the grain shed in the middle. This is powered by their Google business profile. It's formally called Google My Business. Okay. This is an organic result. They did not pay for this. And you can see the shop came up as well. I love the shop also. They're both great. So a couple of things I want to point out. This isn't paid, but it's showing up because the amount of work they did. They have put in 231 photos. And it says 231 plus. So they have even more photos than that. So they have done a ton of work in adding content, again, for free, to their Google business profile. They also have 225 reviews at a 4.8 average rating. That is insane. That is insanely high. And I went through and, and read them. Not all of them, but I went through several, like several pages of them. And they're legit. You know, you can really tell when there's a, when there's a fake reviews, they're very easy to spot. Um, they're just too, they, they generally praise too much and you can kind of tell. And these ones are, are legit. So you are all capable of creating a uh, Google business profile and with a little bit of effort, adding categories, adding photos, adding description, you're able to have one that's as powerful as the grain sheds here. Okay, here is flower shops in Spokane. Now for this one, you can see we have three that have come up and then an organic, what I would call a true organic listing, a list result down here. So this is driven by a different algorithm than this up here. Google places are driven by creating your Google business profile. And what's interesting is that for this one, Google isn't exactly sure which one to put, right? So they put three and really didn't give any prominence to anyone. The grain shed got a lot of prominence here, right? And I didn't dive into the shops or go back and forth on why the grain shed came up, but it did in that case, right? So in this one, again, these ones are free. And it's also free down below for evergreen florist. But this is primarily driven by links that come in or mentions to their website of evergreen floral shop, and also probably some on-page optimization. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Vegan restaurants in Spokane. So here's another one. Here's an ad. So I wanted to highlight the difference between an ad paid and an unpaid listing. So on all search engines, they're required to put the word sponsored. So if you see anything that says sponsored, that is an ad. That doesn't mean it's a negative thing. It just means that's another avenue for you to advertise. And I'm actually a huge advocate of advertising within this local space. So I think this ad from Feast World Kitchen, which I'm also a huge fan of, by the way, I would encourage you to check out. Actually, I love all these places listed here. Um, go, uh, you know. It's one of the best bang for the bucks. And again, we're not talking about advertising today, but you do have the, the opportunity to advertise within this space as well. Now, here's an example of a search that came up that didn't provide, you know, it didn't provide any um, maps listing. It didn't provide a paid ad for me. This is a true uh, old school organic listing. And if you remember back to the early 2000s, the early days of Google, this was the norm. You didn't have all of these blended results that had images and social and, and, and other details. So this is what I would call an old school classic um, SEO result. And when people said they want to rank number one in Google, this is usually what they mean. But I'm here to tell you that it's, it's A, in most cases, unrealistic. And two, there are so many other ways to rank easier, right? So let's just take a look at these for a second. So clothing stores in Spokane, if you have a small boutique, for example, well, now you have to compete against two listings from Yelp, the Spokane Valley Mall, Nordstrom, and the Yellow Pages. They have thousands to tens of thousands to possibly hundreds of thousands of inbound links, huge marketing budgets, and a team of people to help them rank you are not going to beat them. So what I wanna do is provide some guidance to help you decide, hey, where can I win, right? Is, is it the, the Google places? Is it, you know, is it not competitive enough where you could actually have an advantage and actually uh, rank in this area? So um, 
that's one of those things. And in fact, from a question standpoint, I'd be curious uh, if anyone in the chat, you know, wants to know where they would have an advantage, like if they shared their industry or their company or, or what have you. Um, happy to provide some quick guidance there if that comes in via the chat. Okay. So how do you get started? So step one is to claim your Google business profile. It's free. Then optimize it. And that really means adding photos, adding details, adding the correct categories. One of the big mistakes people make is adding too many regions that you cover or adding too many different categories. That, that really dilutes things and it gets kind of spammy. Google is really, really good at detecting spam and false information. So I would encourage everyone to be very, very specific on your category, exactly what you sell and your exact or as close as possible uh, service area because Google knows. And then get listed on directories and citation sources. So citation source. So what is that exactly? It's, it's basically an organized directory, usually of like-minded or similar industries. And we're gonna talk about Live Local as, as well as uh, Simba because they're a citation slash directory that you can take advantage of. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And we're also gonna talk about optimizing your website things that you can do. And I've got five steps on how to do that as well. Oh, and one of the things, and, and I, there's entire 45 minute presentations on how to do step five here, how to ensure your business name, address, and phone number is consistent across all sites. Okay. It gets really technical, really fast. So I'm going to keep it specific and actionable. So it's called NAP. It just, it's short for name, address, and phone. So Google has an algorithm. It's this big, right? And it is trying to figure out if you are who you who you say you are. They know this from information that you put out into the world. If that information is inconsistent, Google doesn't trust you. So conceptually, think of this like you're telling someone what what you do for work or where you live. If you start saying different things, people kind of don't trust you right? So Google doesn't trust you either. So if you were to do a local SEO audit, what you would do or what a consultant would do is they would look at all of your citations and see all the places that you're listed and see if your name is consistent, your phone number is consistent, your product categories are consistent, your, the details about your business are consistent, your address is consistent. So if you remember one thing that's super boring to talk about, but if you can just know that it's really important, it's to make sure that all of your information is as consistent as possible anywhere on the internet. Like if you've already claimed your business, uh, Google business profile and optimized for photos and, you know, done some on page stuff, like 90, 95 to 99% of businesses I've worked with in the past 15 years, that's an issue, the name, address, and phone. And it's, and it's a huge rankings killer. So um, with that, I'm going to take a quick drink and give Brandon a time to give me an update on if we have any questions or comments while I, while I help my voice. <clears throat> so one of the questions is <clears throat> when we're talking about consistency of phone numbers and and contact information we're talking is that across websites and then your google business profile what um are, are there other areas that we should be thinking about um where that information yeah specifically... it's, it's every place that you've ever and it's really difficult to do and it's a total pain but it's so important so if you've listed yourself on any directory like let's say you have a yelp profile and you haven't updated it for 10 years and your number changed but you haven't updated Yelp because you don't use Yelp anymore, it's actually dinging you a little bit, right? So if, if you had a Foursquare page, and I don't know anyone that's used Foursquare in the past five to 10 years, Google is still reading that. And if you have an old number or an old business name, it's potentially confusing Google. So um, a name, address, phone, or a NAP audit or a local SEO audit is something you can do on your own. And you can do it by just Googling your business. Just Google your business, 
and put in a phone number that you know, or your business plus address or what have you, and look for all of the places that your number comes up. And for most businesses, excuse me, even small businesses, I'd say you're probably going to be, even for a new business, you're going to have 20 to 25, maybe 30 different, you know, places that you're found on the internet. And, and the most important thing you can do is just make sure that's consistent. So it really does require going back, logging in, finding those old passwords, and then, you know, updating everything. So it's consistent across uh, wherever you go. Great. Thank you. You bet. All right. So here is where to get started on your Google business profile. Again, it's free, right? Um, so they have a marketing kit and I highly recommend uh, going and checking that out. I've got the link here. At least I think I do. I'm blocking myself on the screen there. Yeah. So marketing kit with google.com. They give you some cool swag and they also, uh, it, it's just helpful information to, to learn and to know a bit more about it. And again, totally free. Okay, let's get down to local rankings. So uh, the search engine folks, um, the people that research this and are consultants and have been doing this forever, they have a yearly search at local search rankings uh, factors uh, document. So if you wanted to know exactly how to rank in local search, um, they'll tell you, like they do deep research and a survey of all the professionals. So if you just did a Google search for the, the most recent um, Google local SEO uh, ranking factors, you'll come up. And this is from 20, this is a little bit outdated. This is from 2022, because 2023 hasn't come out yet. So, because they have GMB, this is Google My Business. They've changed it to Google Business Profile, but it's the same thing. And you can see, so to get found in local search, it's having all that stuff I talked about, having your profile, photos, description, categories, reviews, on page, this is tied to your website, links, this is inbound links of people choosing to link to you. Behavior, I haven't seen proof of this, but I'm gonna trust the people that do this. It's basically Google determining the behavior that you have when you're visiting a website and determining a value from that. Uh, citations is something we're gonna talk about in a second. These are directories and places where you can list your business. And it's usually for free in, at these citations. Sometimes it's paid, sometimes it's free. And these will tell Google why you should rank for certain categories, certain products. Um, whatever you you do or sell. And again, personalization, I haven't personally seen that. So personalization and behavioral are things that I just kind of am trusting the people that put together this type of research. Um, and really, uh, the way I understand personalization is just customizing uh, to the audience and, and really being a good fit, because that's the goal. Google's goal and the search engine's goal is to make sure that um, they're providing uh, the most valuable result for you. And it looks like we had a couple more questions in there. Was that related to this section, Brandon? No, not to this section, Ed. Okay, great. All right. And I'm gonna give some tips to people that are just amazing in this field. So White Spark, uh, Darren Shaw is the founder. Um, this is a paid service if you choose to use it, but they have a lot of free information. So uh, he's an amazing, he and his team are amazing resources. Uh, this is paid. Uh, and I'm going to come back to his free stuff in a second, but I want to talk about citations. So they have a citation finder that is a great tool that helps you find citation and directory, citation sources and directories. And we've, we've seen people use Live Local INW as well as the Spokane Independent Metro Business Alliance or Simba. They're both citation sources. And we've heard from multiple business owners, like it's just a, a very common discussion. They've noticed a lift in their search results when they joined. And it's because we are a trusted source, you know? So I say we broadly in, in the, from a community standpoint. So Live Local is a citation source and they have defined categories of products and services in defined areas. Google loves that. It trusts that. So whenever you have something that, that accomplishes that fact, over time, Google will go, oh, that business really is a, a clothing boutique in South Perry. 
okay, check. Let's give them a little more um, ranking, right? Could because they're a relevant uh, result. So here's Darren Shaw's page for White Spark. So again, I think it's the best uh, video on the internet. This is this is free. Um, it's amazing to me that you know it looks like they just have a little over four thousand subscribers. I personally think that uh, Darren does the best job of giving a, he gives away all this information. If you did nothing but watch Darren Shaw's videos, you would be an expert SEO within like three months or like in the top 99. You'd be in the top 1% if all you did was watch his free videos. And he's a super funny and entertaining person. So also, this is my former organization. So I'm no longer a member of Local U, but I was for over a decade. Uh, all these people here, past and current, uh, there's a, a huge amount of trust uh, with all the people that are members here. So I would go to localu.org uh, about faculty or just do a, a search for local U faculty or go to YouTube. Mike Blumenthal, David Mim, Aaron Wyke, Mary Bowling, uh, Joel Headley. There, there, there's a, a ton of, of amazing individuals. Um, Joy, um, there, there's so many I think there are about 15 people listed on their current faculty and it's a great place for information and they all publish. And so YouTube or blog posts, it's an amazing, amazing resource. Okay. Let's get back to website related stuff. So there, there's a lot of talk about uh, SEO and for a detailed SEO presentation, it could literally be, you know, an entire day just on this. But I'm going to boil it down for you. Research your keywords. If you go to Google, Google has a great tool, just the keyword research tool. Type in keywords that you think are relative to your business and incorporate them into your language, into your navigation. And again, don't over, it doesn't help you to spam them. It doesn't help to overuse it. Just kind of pick your lane and figure out what you're about and then have that be, be relatively consistent. There's no need to really overthink it. And again, going back to point two, logical and name navigations and categories, you know, pick a category that you think makes sense for your audience, right? What are you going to call that subpage? What are you going to call uh, that product line, right? And both catchy to people and, you know, you're kind of doing that balance, right? It, it, it can be really boring if you're just like, we are blueshoes.com. We only sell blue shoes. We're talking about blue shoes. It's obviously, if you sold blue shoes, Google would know that. But you might have some, you know, some branding or some other things to make it more interesting than just blue shoes, right? So you're kind of doing that balance. And they have meta titles and descriptions, and that's a part when you when you Google a website, you'll see it on the top of it. It'll say in text, you know, uh, blueshoes.com. We sell shoes socks and shoes we sell blue shoes and socks right nothing else right so that's a meta title and description in the search engines alt text is where you add an alternative text to images so as you're building this on a website and i know a lot of you don't have websites so i don't want to go a ton into it but as you're adding an image there's always a section for alt text that provides information uh, to google it's also great uh, from an accessibility standpoint, because for people that are vision impaired, it provides that text so that when they scroll over it, it would say, these are blue shoes, right? So it's it's actually really helpful from an accessibility standpoint as well. Okay, and then really from a tech standpoint, a lot of people have posted a certain amount of, of, of words per page or or what have you. It really isn't the case. Provide enough logical and descriptive information on each page of your website, really for search engines to, to know what you do, right? So, you know, whatever that is, um, just provide enough information. And again, please don't just write for search engines. We've all seen horrible websites where it's, we have blue shoes in all sizes of blue shoes, size one to 12 of blue shoes. Don't do that. Write for people with search engines in mind. And that's really the gist. So if, you know, going back to what I would say the most important things are, if you followed these five steps as a small business, you're ahead of 
80% of most businesses. If, if you look at some of these videos from local you and, and Darren uh, Shaw and implement that from a local search standpoint, you're easily in the top 1%. And again, for no cost other than your time. So whether it's your time or someone on your staff, in my opinion, this is the best marketing bang for the buck that, that you can have. And there's a lot more information here, but like I said, we only have the time allotted for today. So I will, I will be available for the next, you know, definitely for the next, I'd hopefully this is fresh enough where I'll get questions in the next days, weeks, months. You can ask me indefinitely, but this is something to like get, get moving on now if you can. Okay. I'm going to take a little break to see if there's any SEO related questions before we move on to the next section. And also, Brandon, how are we on time? I want to be cognizant of where we are in the presentation so we, we're on time for people. Sure, Ed, great question. We have about 18 minutes remaining on this presentation today. Okay. And just one question about, um, we talked about, uh, you know, writing for things that we sell. Does this include services as well? If Absolutely. I'm a yep. company? Yeah, so whatever you sell, I would be very clear and describe that. And one of the things, and this is this is a this is a huge tactical thing. People get really vague on services. Um, get as specific as possible, right? Uh, for example, I'm currently having physical therapy, and the type of uh, work I'm having done is called microfascial strain counter strain. Okay, I'd never heard of it, but if someone knew they were looking for that, or even was like, hey, fascia release or fascia physical therapy, I guarantee my physical therapy shop would be the only people that would have it on their website, right? So anywhere within a, you know, 100 mile radius, the, they would win, right? So, and that's a, a service and people typically would just say, hey, we're a physical therapy shop, we provide this, that, the other, and blah, blah, blah. Um, where they're really missing out is that opportunity to be very specific. And again, that's called long tail. So physical therapist would be the head keyword. And then long tail would be physical therapist, fascia strain, fascia counter strain, something like that. And hardly anyone is going to be in that category. Well, guess what? The people that need what you, you have are going to find you. And it's not going to cost you anything. So... And I think there was another hand. Was that you, Mariah? Or did you? I thought I saw Mariah raised a hand. So I, I did see that one. So go ahead. Yes. I have a question about home based businesses. Yeah. Um, so, and a lot of people start businesses from homes without a brick and mortar location and yeah. then much later on graduate to actually paid commercial real estate. So, for, you know, they might be, I have a friend who, runs her hair salon out of her house. Um, although, you know, she's fully licensed, but it is her home address as well as her business address. Right. And for example, at Haystack Heights, we can have people uh, host other events. So it's kind of like an event venue, but it's not a commercial business. Yeah. And so the Google location bit is very confusing. Do you have to have uh, certain credentials to get no. listed as a location? Um, so, what are the limits on that? Because you yeah. could create a Google location for like a public park. And then, and also I'm wondering if you can help us understand what it takes once you have a Google location that's verified, Yeah. then how do you create a location tag on social media for that? Yeah. So, okay. Let me address upstream of the question. There are a couple of things that are really important. So Google has both your exact address as an option, and they also have a defined service area. Okay, you have like a, a window or a, some sort of shape that Google says, hey, you're, you provide a service in this area. And that's primarily done for security. So for people with home addresses, um, there's a security risk. Like, you know, you potentially could have an angry customer that knows exactly where you live. Like that is a risk. Um, so, and it's not one to be, you know, taken lightly. So Google for a long time has provided the service area. So you just define your service area. The challenge is 
in my experience, again, I don't know if this is still the case because I haven't tested this myself in a while. At the time, it it wasn't great for your, your rankings. It did hurt a little bit. Like it, it definitely is more effective if you have an exact address because that's a higher trust single signal. Um, a few workarounds that really don't work anymore. People used to get addresses, um, you know, at like a shared building. Like you'd have 50 companies that all had the same office building and you'd pay like 25 to 50 bucks a month to, to say you had an office Google's really clamped down on that because it was it was getting uh, really spammy and, and a lot of fake businesses were saying that they were in every city because they would pay these $25 office fees in every city in the country just to say they were a nationwide company. So um, that really isn't uh, effective. I'm not going to say it never works, but it mostly doesn't work in 2023. Um the challenge is, you know, whether or not you really want to. So the verification is is primarily tied to an address. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think of the last part of your question. Uh, so you have those two options, service area or address. What was part of your question, Ryan? It was related to social or... Once you social. have a Google location established, how do you create a location tag on social media? I do not know but I can find that out. So if we could have that in the chat, what I want to do is go through and provide questions like a full Q and a for everything that comes up today. So uh, Brandon, you're our uh, communication person. So if we could get a list and if you could figure out the best way to share Q and a, I'll be the person that finds the answers to that. And I don't know the answer to that one, Mariah. So great question. You but I will, I will probably just go to Darren Shaw's YouTube page and see what, <laughs> see what he says. Okay. All right, moving on to website usability, okay, or UX. This is so important. Um, so it's 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 really a mind shift where people want to create. And again, this is applicable to a website, to a Facebook page, to to anything that's public, you know. And it's are you really do you really want to see? Because it can be painful, right? It can be a challenge. So. Um, it's so, so helpful. And what people usually do is ask their friends, ask their mom, hey, what do you think of my website? Of course, they're going to love your website. Your mom loves you. Your friends want to support you. You're doing this new business endeavor. I get it. I love the love, but it is not helpful. It doesn't help you get better. So what you really want to do um, is find your, your most critical friend if you have a critical, honest, blunt friend that is actually willing to tell you the truth about your website or your Facebook page or whatever. If you don't, I'm a huge fan of going to coffee shops or restaurants that are okay with people working and having discussions and actually asking very specific questions to, to try to find um, how to make things better. So here's an example of a real world project. I've blocked out uh, the company, uh, company name as it's a, a real project. So this was the original website. And we did interviews. So we interviewed people and recorded them. And we were looking for people that were likely customers. And this is a direct quote. It just feels kind of icky. I can't quite put my finger on it. It feels like a payday loan site. And when I told the executive team that, they just sunk. And they're like, we're not icky. <laughs> we want to help people. And I'm like, I get it. But that's based on this, right? So this is what I would say to this. They have a really small navigation that we can barely read. Fast financing for your company is super generic. They have a boilerplate mission that could really be kind of anything. And it's an obvious stock image. And when you look at this gentleman here wearing the green uh, vest, I'm not sure that he wants to push the button to click to contact me, right? So... That was changed to this one. We did some research and found out that most of their companies that need these kind of loans are in the manufacturing business. So we found an image. Um, this is actually a stock image as well, but we paid a good amount for it because uh, it worked. And we spent all day coming up with same day business financing, monthly lines from 25,000 to 5 million. Simple direct language, no pitch. And they actually had an 
trust pilot rating and they were really hesitant on putting their actual review there and i'm here to tell you people trust real reviews five star reviews 10 star on trust pilot they're not real so i would encourage you to get reviews and if you have a 4.3 4.2 4.1 um that is totally fine and i would say the most trusted reviews are in the 4.3 to 4.5 range on the five star scale because it's real so here's a before and after right and what did that do so from an analytics side uh it went up so people looking at pricing this was an immediate flip of the switch like with, within a month it went up 130%. How it works, which is their process of getting started, up 121%. So literally from a before and after standpoint, we ask, we got blunt crushing comments and addressed the icky. We had to define what icky was and we figured that out and then changed the website. So, you know, I love this quote. There's a great book out there called Ruined by Design. Um, the goal of feedback isn't to find out people like what you made. It isn't to, to get good feedback uh, that contains zero information. But to hear this thing here is broken is actually great feedback. You just want to hear honest advice about how to fix it. And again, I, I've gone to so many coffee shops. I just have a, a, so many coffee gift cards and whatever, and you don't have to do a special login. I've oftentimes just had my iPhone recording a session saying, hey, here's a website. Could you tell me what you think about it? And here's some, uh, oh, and uh, ping pong. Hello, ping pong is my, if you are going to do a for real one and recruit an audience, I love hello ping pong. They just got bought by Hotjar, uh, phenomenal company. You can actually use it for free. If you get your own audience, you can use their platform, their entire tool, uh, platform tool, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, that's the, that there's a free version. And if you use their monthly where they recruit people for you, I think it's like 250 a month. So it's expensive if you ask for their people. If you find your own people, you get to use an amazing platform for free. You know, and here for some sample questions, you know, if you're going to a website, ask people, you know, what was their challenge on the website? Did you find what you're looking for? You know, if you were running the show at this company, what would you change? What was frustrating? And then also like what worked well, like if something on a website or a Facebook page or any social media presence is working well, you, you want to know what's good so you can do more of what's good and less of what's challenging or frustrating. You know, and you really just, you want unbiased feedback. And as you're talking to people, people aren't used to doing this, remind them to think aloud, have them talk and say, oh, I'm trying to log in right now. And uh, now I'm logged in and I'm kind of confused if I should go to the products page or whatever. I'm trying to buy the blue shoes and I'm not really sure what to do next. So you want them to talk out loud as you're recording them either on a platform or with your phone or, or what have you. Um, and it's it, this is, in my opinion, this might be the most effective thing because so few people focus on usability. A lot of people either focus on SEO or paid search get the horse to water very few really focus on the, the quality and, and utility and usefulness of their website or or presence itself and this is such an easy way to um to immediately cut through that um this is one of my favorite books rocket surgery made easy uh stephen krug uh amazing author usability.gov has a ton of amazing resources as well and there's some other tools. And this is all super fun stuff. This is, you know, you're you're seeing how people are interacting with your website. You're seeing heat maps. Um, I personally think this is probably the funnest and most beneficial area from an online standpoint. And if you really want to go deep, uh, the holy grail of UX tools is at this link. It's literally every tool that you can possibly use for usability. Um, it's amazing. I've been using it for years and it, this tool keeps expanding and I don't know who owns this. It's just like a, a shared document, but it's awesome. Okay. Uh, Brandon, do we have any questions related to, to usability or, or website related stuff? And, or if not, did that make sense? Do you think I need to, to describe what it is to, to those of you that are there is to, do you get what I was trying to convey there? It's kind of a new concept to a lot of people. No, 
no questions in the chat right now. Um, <clears throat> And you're Brandon, right, what, what are your what are your thoughts? Do you think that's clear enough for for people if they go back to to view this later? Yeah, I think the tools that you've um, you've identified to explain UX um, that's definitely a whole di or uh, excuse me usability. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a whole different conversation. But um, in a nutshell, yeah, that's uh, a great explanation. I think. Okay. Cool. All right. Google Analytics is going away. Universal Analytics is is going away in July. Um, it's just going to be a really difficult transition. Uh, if if you are already versed in Google Analytics, it's still hard. It's 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 definitely a challenge, and measurement is really important. Um, so, of the alternatives out there, there all of the ones that I think are worth using are paid. So here are the. Uh, choices. And this is an order, in my opinion. I think Hotjar is the best choice. With Hotjar, you get analytics. You also get heat mapping and some usability tools. So in my opinion, it's kind of the best of, of both worlds. Uh, Fathom Analytics, Next, Clicky, and then Plausible, like in order of importance. Um, I also want to mention, I'm definitely not slamming GA4. It is an amazing enterprise level tool. This is for small businesses. So uh, it is evolving to where Google wanted it to go. And in my opinion, it's very obvious that they're focusing on enterprise and not small business. That also makes sense because that's where the largest budgets are and Google Analytics exists to provide evidence of Google AdWords advertising. So Mariah, go ahead. It seems like we have a digital divide in haves and have nots in the capacity to actually direct eyeballs online to big businesses and not to small businesses. At what point does this become a marketplace fairness issue? It already is. It already is. So are there yeah. any efforts afoot to advocate for small businesses as a class of a type of businesses operating on a certain scale to make sure that they don't lose access to, you know, digital commerce, which is where the bulk of yeah. a lot of markets are going. You know, I, I don't know. You have, you have certain organizations like Local U, the organization that I was a member of for for ten years. We always focused and we were always advocating for small businesses. And I think you have a lot of grassroots organizations that advocate and try to help. Um, and, you know, you have companies like Google that make these amazing tools that are free, like Google Analytics has been free forever, and it's been amazing forever. And to me, this was a very conscious choice to step away from small and medium businesses and to go where the money is. And I don't really, I don't know how, at, I'm not aware of any efforts to advocate on behalf of small businesses at scale, like on a large national or even regional level. Is that, was that the nature of your question? Is that kind of where you were going? Yeah. I mean, if how much of search traffic it goes through Google, 97%, something it's, like that. It's crazy high. It depends on the country, but well over 90. Yeah. And yet they just decided not to even bother with how many, you know, half of all businesses are small businesses. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a digital democracy issue. And there are some national advocacy groups that the Spokane Independent Metro Business Alliance is actually a part of. Mm -hmm. to try to address these um, total unfairnesses in the way our we con connect to customers has gone. Uh, one of them is called Small Business Rising. Um, it's a coalition run through the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, and it is arguing to have the federal government protect our marketplaces so that small businesses can continue to compete in them and not be completely rendered invisible and unable right. to uh, attract the kind of capital they need to continue their operations. So um, I just, you know, this is kind of a side note, but it is a plug for, you know, I think you're, you've been really good at showing us that we're trying to get discovered with one hand tied behind our back. You know, this isn't, the, the game isn't fair. It has been kind of rigged towards the bigs. And uh, if, if small businesses don't band together and create different ways of reaching customers, like in the actual real communities that we live, um, everyone's hurting. It's kind of a collective issue, death by a thousand cuts. Each business might not notice it, but right. across our region, our business community is really feeling it, even if individuals aren't conscious of it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we created the Live Local campaign and offer a free 
digital marketplace and some of the other tools that we're rolling out. So thanks for painting a clear picture for how important it is for us to be involved in these alternative marketing mechanisms to maintain those customer relationships. Well, it's even it's even worse than uh, like had I thought of that as a lens, I didn't think of it when I was creating the, the presentation. Um, it's even worse than that. So the only way to use Google Analytics as an example, like not just to pick on Google, there are a lot of tools that are in this camp that are kind of difficult for kind of difficult to impossible for small businesses to use. Google Analytics is still free. There's no way you're getting any value out of it unless you have somebody that is a professional analyst. There's no way. And those people are all six figure people. It doesn't matter where you live. So unless you can afford a hundred to $150,000 person a year to use this free tool. Right. And that's just off the table. Like, I don't know. In Spokane, I think there are five full-time analysts total. Like, and I know them, like I would like when there's six, like every time there's a new one in town, I'm like, Ooh, has anybody met whoever yet? <laughs> right. Because there's one more, like there just isn't there, there aren't enough people to help support the small businesses and it's too expensive. So the, your point is abs not only is your point accurate, it's not nearly as dire. Um, like you, like there could be a whole presentation on how difficult it actually is to, to compete. So it's actually worse. I'd love to follow up um, and do another webinar around this kind of collective um, yeah. digital access issue. Um, so I think you bring a lot of realistic um, expert knowledge on the state of the market and where it's headed. And I don't hear any other chamber organizations talking about this, even though it's affecting a majority of their members. So thanks for raising the oh, issue in the picture. Yeah. Yep. Happy to. And again, I don't want to paint it. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's always a balance between like addressing the truth and seeing your truth and also providing support. Like you can't just throw your arms in the air and give up. Like you have to do something, right? So if you're looking at measuring marketing and advertising, here are four uh, viable options that I would view these, even though it's paid, I would view all of these as quite affordable and worth the cost of doing business. It is just a, a line item that's incredibly affordable and powerful. So, and I'm not affiliated with any of these. Um, it's just, if you're doing marketing, advertising, anything out there, you need to measure it and decide if it's working or not. And Google Analytics is now off the menu for 99 plus percent of, of people. It's just, it's gonna, maybe it'll get easier in a couple of years, but right now, on all the forums that I'm that I'm at, every analyst is like, I've used it for 10, 20 years. Holy crap. This is really hard. Like, it's just really hard. So, okay. Okay, a bit about online reviews. I, know, I knew we were going to get close on time, and I'm totally right. Like, we're at time, but I just want to say this, and I knew we weren't going to have enough time. So, they're super important. Uh, create a process. Ask for them follow up with people and just, you know, make it part of your doing business. Hey, thank you. It seems like you had a good time today. Hey, would you, you know, mind leaving a review? And if you ask a hundred people, a good hit rate, five to 10, 10% 10 hit rate is probably even of people that really like your business, right? So the follow through is important over time. So that's that's it. It requires a long-term effort. There are a couple of tools. Uh, my friend Aaron uh, launched this company. They're not local. Uh, they're out of Minneapolis, but he's this is his second company um, focusing on uh, lead gen and following up with people and creating reviews and making it slightly more automated. Uh, he also posts a lot of free information. So whether or not you use Leadferno or any other tool, a lot of helpful tips by Paul following people in the online review space to figure out what to do from a best practices standpoint. Okay, that is that. Uh, looks like we have a couple more questions, but in summary, you know, get found. It's your discovery. It's free. There are ways to, to, to do it. You know, we talked about citations, directories, your live local listing, your symbol listing. These all help support um, getting found. And again, 
I know it's a, a, a nerdy thing, the whole NAP name address phone, being consistent across the internet is really important for your business. Um, in terms of website UX, ask the tough questions, go to coffee shops, ask people to be brutally honest and just destroy your website, give them extra coffee and cookies and treats if they destroy it extra good and really just you know, let you all the things that are wrong. Uh, get reviews over time, that third party validation helps and hopefully some of these new analytics platforms will help you measure. Uh, and it is unfortunate. Um, like I said, I've been using Google Analytics for 20 years and I've been trying to figure out a way to bring it to people. And I, I just don't think as of right now, it's possible for the small to mid-sized businesses people to, to learn and uh, incorporate it with any real value. And I'm here. So that Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to jump in real quick and say sure. um, thank you all for having this session. It's fantastic. And one of the things I'm very interested in, um, I think Maria mentioned having another session follow up. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, one of the things I realized is, especially in the capitalistic society that we live in, it's kind of like Google understands, like we all should, right? That the way capitalism works is that an idea comes up. A business is made around it, it expands, get customers, it absorbs or eliminates the competition, and then there's a monopoly. So Google is deliberately, I think, and from the outside, making a, a choice to not care about any new ideas or any new marketplaces that are local or below a certain amount of cap space or whatever, and focusing primarily on the established businesses and the established ideas, which is... Um, a conversation that we definitely need to have because as a small business, you have to understand your strength is in being local and capturing what they can't capture with the analytics, you know? So I do like this whole conversation and thank you for being in this space. Thank you all. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dwight. Um, and and to, Dwight's, to Dwight's point, I, Mariah, I would love to do uh, another one. And if we had a follow up, like even within the, you know, the live local uh, session, like maybe even one for May, I'm happy to put another one on the books for um, maybe we do like a little Q&A on a topic that would be a good follow up just so it can be kind of focused on what people would want to see or find value from. So happy to do that. And again, this is my info. That's me from 12, 13 years ago, uh, promoting the very first local U that would, actually was in Spokane. So we launched a national series and Spokane was the very first event. And I think that was from 2011, I think. I don't know, short hair, no gray. My kids either were, yeah, you know, they were really young. So I didn't have all the stress of stuff and things and age and all that. I'm, I'm looking at myself now. I am much grayer than I was in that photo. Um, but happy to help. Uh, anything related to this conversation or, or really, you know, uh, your business and, and online support in general, if I don't know the answer, I'm happy to help figure out where to go and who to talk to. And that's how to get a hold of me at sixmanmarketing.com. Um, again, I can't see the chat. Brandon, is there any any other questions that are that are lingering there before we sign off? Uh, <clears throat> no more questions before we sign off. So this has been a great presentation. We appreciate you, Ed, very much. This is great. great. Thank you very much, and I look forward to doing another one. And Mariah, Brandon, will reconvene and figure out uh, if you know not if, but I think we should put together another one in the next three to four weeks and do it again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being a leader and a board member, Ed. You bet.